What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Well, here I am in my tubby again, and my tubby is all filled with nice water and fluffy suds, while everybody's getting their transponder snails together to unveil the secrets of the world. And Vegapunk's still making his coffee, but does all of this trouble you, St. Marcus Mars? Does it? You could always hop in. The water's really warm. There's only one more minute to go. Savage. And we're back. One Piece 1112 is finally out after a very long, month-long break. But Oda needs them. Truth be told, we need them too, even if we don't want them. But we have a chapter now, so we will dissect the feast that is in front of us to not only understand what we've been given, but to potentially understand where we are going. What is Mars looking at? We'll talk about that today. We'll talk about potential matchups. I still only believe we have less than five chapters left of Egghead. So we'll kind of dissect and understand all of that. And I've got some really, well, it's a it's an interesting thought about Frankie that I'm excited to share with you guys, even if it is a little dark. And speaking of dark, I don't want to gatekeep drip. So if you're not following After Dark Co. on Instagram, you should, because they've got exclusive merchandise like this. They're doing pre-time skip stuff. And I am in love with this. This is my new favorite One Piece t-shirt. I love this. And why wouldn't I, right? I mean, it's the only Alabasta shirt I have because it's the only Alabasta shirt that I've ever seen. Shout out to those guys. Go follow them on Instagram. Links below. And speaking of following, follow me. Like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. Let's talk about Frankie. It's my favorite part of the chapter. Him taking out Red King. Gotta love it. But I have a question for everybody. Could Frankie die during Egghead? Fighting a Gorosei member and one-shotting a Vice Admiral are huge takeaways for the arc, and it's about time Frankie got his flowers. But could this be Oda's way of giving him a bunch of high moments before pulling the rug out from under us and doing something devastating? We're getting a little tinfoil here, we're getting crazy, but stick with me. What if he got so damaged that the only way to actually save Frankie was to upload his consciousness into another device? The device I'm thinking of? The Sunny. This would be foreshadowing from the bounty poster, which is literally the Sunny, right? What if Frankie literally became the brain of the Sunny? And furthermore, if Lilith stuck around for a little bit and did a bunch of modifications and turned the Sunny into this gigantic mechazord, like a huge upgrade of Frankie's Shogun, which Frankie would be able to switch in between being a ship and being a fighter, then he could go up against someone like San Juan Wolf, who is also known as the Colossal Battleship, because at that point, Frankie would literally be a battleship, which is also a reference to the SBS, where in a timeline where things went wrong for Frankie, he became a ship. And if he is able to transform at will between Giant Megazord and ship, he will still be able to achieve his dream, only he would literally be the ship. This would be another instance of Frankie cheating death, but it would also invert what happened to Kuma, because Kuma kept his body but lost his mind. Here, Frankie would lose his body but keep his mind, and it's an opportunity for Vegapunk to put all of the 21 grams of the soul talk to use by essentially turning Frankie into the Sonny's Club Otterman. There's also a poetry to that when you consider that Frankie was the person who told us the story of the Club Waterman in the first place. It's like, uh, I was made for this. What did St. Marcus Mars see? After adventuring around with York, he made it to Punk Records, which is an area that we've actually never seen from the inside. So it's a dark room, the transponder snail, which looks very familiar to the uh, ones that we saw in film Red, is there. It's looking forward. Mars looks shook. What is he looking at? The only clue we have is the sound effects. Glub, glub, glub. It is a watery sound here. 
So, could he be looking at more clones? Could this be an entire room similar to what Sanji saw underneath, you know, the, the in the Germa lab, right? Just a bunch of clones lining the walls. Are they Seraphim? Now, I'm of the thinking that only the Seven Warlords will be Seraphim, and that is the way that I would prefer the story to go. But we do know that Vegapunk did experiment on other people, namely Kaido, Whitebeard, and Stussy. Now, the Whitebeard one is assumed because of Weevil, right? But regardless, what do those three characters have in common? Hmm, they were all part of rocks. Does Vegapunk have some sort of weird connection to the Rocks Pirates? Is he trying to recreate the Rocks Pirates? Are there augmented Seraphim versions of these characters uh, strewn about as well? There's a possibility for it. I'm not going to rule it out, but it's not the one I like. I would love it if it was just multiples of the Seraphim. Uh, but the most obvious answer, the Occam's Razor, maybe even the best answer, and the easiest layup one is that it is a giant brain. It is the rest of Vegapunk. When we first met him, he said that his brain is still growing to this day. But meanwhile, he's a split head like Foxy. He cut his head off, right? So is the brain in punk records likening itself to the name? You know, your brain itself is a house of records, as anybody who's seen Inside Out can confirm. But if it was a gigantic brain here, then that could be what has St. Marcus Mars shook, right? Because this is the home of information and what is the scariest thing to the world government? Information. And here is a hub housing the most dangerous information in the world, perhaps, because he has been searching for the void history. He's read the books, all of that. What Mars did to the lab down below with his like Boro breath attack, he could do to this giant brain, which would be wild. If the brain is injured, would that affect the Stella? Would it affect the satellites? Alternatively, and in the same line of thinking about information being the most dangerous thing, I'd actually like it if we turned around and there were like chalkboards and books and information of things that Vegapunk has collected that clue us into the Void history and all of this stuff, like basically a collection of all the horrific things that the Gorosei have done over the centuries. So what Mars is actually looking at is a mirror of himself because he's seeing all these terrible things. Or Mars could just be looking at Vegapunk's coffee, right? Because that would make a glub glub sound too. Anyway, in the last video, we said that should Ethan Baron, Venus Juro, continues speeding along the coast, he will likely run into Frankie and Bonnie's group trying to board the new giant warrior pirate ship. That has happened. Sanji is on his way to that location as well. Will he get the first crack at Zoro's eventual final opponent? I think that that's what's going to happen. And theoretically, I have Mars as Sanji's final opponent. Now, he is at the uppermost area in Punk Records, and Zoro is also heading upwards to link up with Dami, Usopp, Chopper, and Robin. Could he get lost and end up in punk records? That would actually be hilarious. And then he gets a first crack at Sanji's eventual opponent. And neither of them can actually beat their opponent here, but later on, they flip and they beat their respective opponents and no one can know exactly how to scale everything. That's the way I see things happening right now. But Saturn, is also getting involved. And that is one of the best developments of this because I don't know where that's going to go. But I do hope, and I really hope that Oda doesn't fumble the bag on this one, I hope that this leads to a conversation between the Gorosei, right, Saturn, and their mortal enemy, Robin. Going back to information is power, Robin has information as well. So that conversation needs to happen. And speaking of Robin, why is Stussy going to sacrifice herself when we have a character who can make clones of themselves. Stussy should just get on the ship and Robin should have a clone pressing the button that turns into Sakura petals before everything explodes or, you know, the, the barrier goes down, all of that. Sure, it would use a lot of stamina, whatever. But hey, I guess we need the Bon Clay and or Monet of the arc. 
this is kind of a cop out. But I do hope the best case scenario of this is that Stussy volunteered herself for this particular job because she doesn't want them to escape. I still am sussy about Stussy. So if she turns out that she is partially bad, I will be very happy about that because I still need to understand why she was looking for the tomate pills in the tomate box during Whole Cake Island's tea party. The, that has not been revealed yet. And we still have Luffy acting like he is being affected by the tomate pills. Odi abused them. He turned into a white warrior with red eyes and... When he was done, he turned into an old man. And even once again, in this chapter, we have Luffy turning into an old man, but the giants, don't worry. They've got fermented shark meat. They got it in the tuck. So Luffy is okay. He is fighting up against uh, Top Man Warkiri, and I did like that Red Rock didn't work. Didn't work. And as the representative of Mercury, the planet closest to the sun, the hottest planet, right? He's hot to the touch. But this also is in line with the folklore and they have a very, very tough skin that is said to not even to, to be impenetrable to weapons as well. So if Luffy isn't in gear five, he can't actually hurt Topman. I mean, I guess that's why he's the top man, right? Savage. Come on, he's top one. I love the whole panel of Luffy throwing the building at Jupiter, right? Because it's actually breaking the fourth wall, which is something that a lot of people have been waiting for with Gear 5, because the protruding building outside of Shai Halu, Jupiter's mouth, is actually bleeding into the previous page, creating like a 3D effect. It's a, it's a cool element for Moda. Predictions for 11.13, we will separate ourselves from Egghead, and Oda will give us a catch-up on everybody who's been setting up their snails. We'll go back to Water 7, Dressrosa maybe, uh, you know, this island, that island, so that when we come back to Mars, whether he does or does not shut this message off, we will have an understanding of where everybody is in this timeline, what they've accomplished in these seven to ten minutes as they're waiting for Vegapunk to stop talking about coffee. It will be anticlimactic if Mars does stop the broadcast, the smartest man in the world should have a bunch of fail saves. Like, this should be Batman with prep time. And Vegapunk has been setting this up for a while. He should have thought and calculated for just about every possible scenario. I would love if this was a trap for Mars. Like, Vegapunk knew the whole time that York was playing him and set this up because he knew everything would happen piece by piece. I need that Vegapunk gotcha moment. We haven't had it yet. And for him to be the smartest man in the world and not have that that moment, it's, uh, it's a little disappointing. So hopefully that's coming real soon. And that's going to wrap things up, guys. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that supports. I do need your help, though. After the month break, we are back in algorithm jail. Of course we are. So if you can do me a favor, hit that like button. Leave a comment. I don't care if it's high algorithm, something. I, I, I would love to know what you think of the new Frankie theory, uh, because that is, even though it's dark, it's it's fun. I think I'm going to stand by it. And or to tell me what you think Mars was looking at. It doesn't matter. But, um, you know, I've got a lot of videos and things that I'm working on and stuff that I want to come out. But I want to make sure that we're out of algorithm jail before I put that stuff out. You know, if I'm putting a lot of work into something, I want to make sure that the maximum amount of people that we can reach will be able to see it, hopefully. Uh, so uh, that's where I'm at with everything, and I appreciate the support either way. So like, comment, subscribe. Feeling the vibe. See you guys for 1113. Bye. Savage.